Welcome back to another episode of Smooth Brain EDH, where we make the smoothest plays with the biggest brains. The Smooth Brain crew has brought some old favorites and some new spice to the table this week, so let's see what they're all playing. First up is Logan on Torbrand, Thane of Red Fell. This is a mono red burn deck, using Torbrand to buff the power of all of his damage spells. His starting hand is two mountains, Wayfarer's Bobble, Firebrand Archer, Gutter Snipe, Fire Elemental, and Common Storm. Next up is Shelby on Carebeck, the Spiteful. This mono black deck is focused around putting opponent's creatures down to zero toughness to trigger different effects when they die. He keeps three swamps, Mind Stone, Golden Demise, Knight of Souls Betrayal, and Harvester of Souls. Our third player today is Chandler on the partner pairing of Nadir and Tevish Zot. This is a mono black token strategy, hoping to amass a huge board of tokens and use them in different ways to take his opponents down. He keeps a hand with the Snow Covered Swamp, Castle Lockthwain, Mind Stone, Worn Power Stone, Phyrexian Altar, Toxic Deluge, and Lolf Spider Queen. Last is Matt on Kyler, Sigardian Emissary. This is a human tribal deck focused around putting plus one plus one counters on Kyler to power up the rest of his creatures. He starts the game with two forests, overgrown farmland, three visits, the Great Hinge, Veil of Summer, and Wall of Mourning. We're about to hop right into the game, but before that, Go ahead and give us a like, subscribe, and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any of our new content. We post new gameplay videos every week and new episodes of our podcast every other week, so you don't want to miss it. Links to the deck lists, our social media, and our public Discord server are in the description. Our channel is also partnered with the Dragon Shield, so if you're looking to pick up any new sleeves or magic-related products, check out our affiliate link in the description. Now, on to the gameplay. It looks like Chandler wins the die roll. He'll play a Snow Swamp and pass the turn. Matt will play a tapped overgrown farmland and pass the turn to Logan, who will play a mountain and cast a turn one Wayfarer's Bobble, then pass the turn. Shelby drops a swamp and passes back to Chandler, who plays Castle Lockthwain as land for turn, then taps for two and casts a Mind Stone before passing. Matt will play a force as land for turn, then tap for two and cast three visits. He searches up a tapped Temple Garden to the battlefield and passes while searching. Logan plays another mountain and goes ahead and cracks his Bobble and passes while searching. Shelby plays another swamp, taps for two and casts his own Mind Stone. He and Chandler share a virtual handshake for having the same turn to play. Shelby will then pass the turn, and Chandler will play a Witch's Cot as his land for turn, then tap for three and cast a Worn Power Stone. The turn is then passed to Matt, who plays another Forest as land for turn, then taps for three to cast a Ranger Captain of Eos. When he ETBs, he tells the table he's going to go search for an Esper Sentinel and passes while searching. Now in Logan's turn, he'll play a Mountain. He then thinks about what he wants to do for this turn, but ultimately decides to cast his commander, Torbran. He'll then pass the turn to Shelby, who plays a Swamp as land for turn. After this, he taps for two black mana and casts another traitor. He then moves to combat and swings for one at Chandler, then passes the turn. Now on Chandler's turn, he'll play a Frostwalk Bastion as land for turn. He'll then tap his worn power stone to cast a Thought Vessel, then taps for five mana to cast one of his commanders, Tevesh Sot. He'll uptick him to make two O one thralls, but accidentally gives him plus one loyalty instead of the plus two he should have had. Regardless, the turn is passed to Matt, and wanting some of that sweet sweet card draw, Matt will play his Esper Sentinel. After this, he'll cast his Wall of Mourning, exiling the top three cards of his library underneath it. And when he moves to his end step, Wall of Mourning's Coven ability will trigger, so he puts one of those cards to his hand. Now in Logan's turn, he'll drop a quick Blood Moon, which is not particularly good against Shelby, but it locks Chandler on one black and Matt on only green. He will pay the one, then moves to combat and swings Torbran at Shelby, making him take four commander damage. The turn is then passed to Shelby. He'll play a Swamp as land for turn, and then move to combat, swinging one at Logan. He'll then just pass the turn to Chandler who is very thankful to have drawn another Snow Swamp, and he plays it as land for turn. He'll then tap for 4 mana and cast a Yawgmoth, Thran Physician. He'll then uptick to make 2 more O1 Throlls, which is good ammunition for that Yawgmoth, and then he'll tap for 3 mana and cast a Phyrexian Altar, and he will pay 1 to Esper Sentinel. He'll then try to pass turn, but Metal stop him on his end step to cast Veil of Summer, essentially cycling it away. Now in his turn, he'll pay 1 red to cast an Ozolith, and unfortunately, Matt really doesn't have much he can do with just green mana, so he'll move to his end step, get his card from his wall, and then pass the turn to Logan. And Logan will start off with a mountainous land for turn. He'll then tap for two mana and cast a Firebrand Archer. He'll then tap for three more and cast a Sulfuric Vortex. Firebrand Archer trigger, making everyone take three, and Logan can't pay for Esper Sentinel, so Matt will draw a card. Logan will then move to combat and swing Torbrand at Shelby. Shelby would be taking four damage here, but Chandler offers to put two Neguan Neguan counters on Torbrand, making his power zero if Shelby will cast his commander next turn. Shelby agrees, so Chandler will sacrifice two Thralls, pay two life, draw two cards, and put two Neguan Neguan counters on Torbran. And so Shelby will take no damage, and Logan will pass the turn. And on Shelby's upkeep, he'll take four. Shelby will then ask Chandler if he actually cares if it's his commander he casts, or if he just wants a similar effect. 
And Chandler says he's perfectly fine with something similar. So Shelby will tap for 4 mana and cast a Knight of Souls Betrayal. And he will pay the 1 to Esper Sentinel. Chandler will respond by paying another life, sacrificing another Thrall to put a Nego Nego encounter on Torbrain and draw a card. He'll then do the same thing, but this time putting a counter on Matt's wall. The Souls of Betrayal will then resolve, which means Epster Sentinel, Firebrand Archer, and Torbrand will all die. After this, the turn will be passed to Chandler. He'll take two on his upkeep, and then he'll play Snow Swamp as land for turn. He'll then tap for three to cast and crack a Wayfarer's Bobble. He'll then tap for five to cast his Spider Queen Lolth. He'll zero her to draw a card and lose a life, and then pass the turn to Matt. Matt will stop on instep to cast a Force of Vigor, pitching Shamanic Revelation. He knows his first target is going to be Blood Moon, then asks the rest of the table what his second target should be. Phyrexian Altar seems to be the consensus, because it is one of Chandler's combo pieces, but Matt brings up that Knight of Souls Betrayal kind of keeps that combo under wraps. But Logan does bring up the fact that Chandler does play Feed the Swarm, and that's enough to make Matt decide on Phyrexian Altar as the second target. And so Blood Moon and Phyrexian Altar will both be destroyed. Moving to Matt's turn now, he'll take two on his upkeep and then play a Balagid Sanctuary as land for turn. He'll then sit there and think for quite a bit, then move to combat, swing for two at Logan, and then just pass the turn. Logan will take two on his upkeep, play another mountain, cast Torbrand, and then pass the turn. Now on Shelby's turn, he takes four on his upkeep. He'll then tap for three to cast a Grim Tutor, losing three life and finding a card to his hand. He'll then play a Cabal Coffers as land for turn, which he admits he totally searched for. Activate its ability to float 4 mana, and then cast his commander before passing the turn. Chandler takes 4 in his upkeep, then plays another Snow Swamp as land for turn. After this, he'll pay 3 mana and 2 life to cast a Toxic Deluge, X is equal to 2. Thanks to Knight of Souls Betrayal and Karavik, this wipes the entire board. Matt will respond though by sacrificing his Ranger Captain of Eos to make sure Chandler can't cast any more non-creature spells for this turn. And then after the Toxic Deluge resolves, Yogmoth will die and Loth will get a counter. Chandler will then uptick to Vash to make two all one thralls that die immediately, but this puts two more counters on Loth. Chandler will then zero Loth to draw a card and lose a life, and then decides to just pass the turn while bluffing a lot of instant speed interaction. Matt stops him on his end step and casts a Worldly Tutor. He'll find and put a Kodama of the West Tree on the top of his library. Now moving on to his turn, Matt will take two damage on his upkeep and then cast Kyler. And after this, the turn will be passed to Logan who will take two on his upkeep to his own Sulfuric Vortex, and then he begins asking the table some questions. And the first question is, does everybody like Chandler's Planeswalkers? Shelby and Matt both say no. Chandler says yes. That question is then followed up with, is it better to take each Planeswalker down by three or one by four? Each by three is more total damage, so that is what everyone chooses. And so Logan will tap for six mana and cast a Comet Storm, X is equal to three, multi-kicked once. The targets are Tevesh and Loth, and so both of them will go down by three loyalty. The turn will then be passed to Shelby, who takes two damage on his upkeep. Now in his main phase, he'll start off with a basic swamp as land for turn. He'll then tap for two and activate Cabal Coffers to make another five black mana. He'll then tap for one more and drop a Massacre Worm. Matt's Kyler will die and he'll lose two life, and this also pretty much shuts out Chandler's plus two at Tavesh. After this, the turn is passed to Chandler, who takes two on his upkeep. And he'll start by tapping for four mana and dropping a Crypt Ghast. He'll then play Nick the Shrine and Nyx as land for turn, and then completely taps out, making a total of 14 mana, and then checks to see if Matt has any untapped white sources. Gotta respect the tithe. He'll then drop a Torment of Hailfire, X is equal to 12. Unfortunately, the table can't do anything to stop this, so it will resolve. Starting with Matt, he'll discard a total of 5 cards, and then sacrifices Ozolith, and then lose 18 life. Logan will do almost the exact same thing. He'll discard 5 cards and sacrifice a Sulfuric Vortex, and then lose 18 life. Now onto Shelby, he'll discard 4 cards and sacrifice his Mind Stone and Knight of Souls Betrayal, taking 18 as well. Moving on, Chandler can now uptick his Tevesh to make his Thralls again, and they won't immediately die. After this, he'll zero with Loth again to draw a card and lose a life, and then he'll play the card he drew, which is the Jeweled Lotus. The turn will then be passed to Matt, who plays a Mana Confluence as land for turn, then taps for 3 to cast Kodama. The turn is then passed to Logan, who actually has a really good top deck and Lightning Strike, which he immediately uses to kill Crypt Ghast. The Ghast dies, and Chandler will lose two life to Shelby's Worm, and a Loth Trigger is missed. The turn is then passed to Shelby, who immediately activates Cabal Coffers to make five black mana, taps for one more, and casts his commander. When resolves, this will kill Chandler's Thralls, forcing him to lose four more life. Shelby will then move to combat and swing for six at him. And after putting him dangerously low, Shelby will pass the turn. And Chandler starts off with a Faceless Haven. He'll then tap for two and cast an Animate Dead to bring his Yawgmoth back to life. He'll then sacrifice his Jeweled Lotus for three black mana and then tap for three more to cast his other commander, Nadir. He'll then tap Nykthos and two more mana to activate Nykthos to make seven black mana. And using five of it, he'll drop a Grey Merchant of Asphodel. 
His devotion to black is 9, so all of his opponents will lose 9 life, and Chandler will gain life equal to the amount of life lost this way. Unfortunately, this does kill Shelby. After this, Chandler will use the last two black floating mana to cast a Knight's Whisper to draw two and lose two. Chandler will then uptick Tavesh to make his thralls, and downtick Lolth to make the two one spiders. Chandler will then pass the turn. Matt and Logan both take their turns to see if they can top deck a board wipe. Unfortunately, they cannot. If you include Chandler's creature lands, he has more than enough power to kill both of them, so they'll just concede the game at this point. So, congrats Chandler, you are this week's winner. Well guys, there you have it. That was a pretty exciting game. Did it go how you expected, or did you think another deck would come out on top? I particularly liked this game because there was a lot of communications at this table. Deals were made and upheld, and players even asked each other what target should be chosen for certain spells. If you guys enjoyed, please let us know in the comments below, we always love hearing from you. And while you're down there, don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. And if you are interested in any of these decks, the links will be in the description down there as well. You can also find our social media, links to our podcast, and a link to Dragon Shield too, if you're looking to protect your purchases or just get some MTG related products. As always everyone, thank you so much for watching, I hope you all have a smooth day.